Okay, what you have here is equipment of a night round about 1150 posts, so 1160, 1170. Got the bucket helm, which goes on for riding. You have vision here, none there, some there, none there. If you come off your horse, with this thing on, the only way is forward. Toss that, and I've got my coif, I have padding on underneath it, and I probably, if I was correctly equipped, have a secret helmet underneath. That would be three layers of protection to stop my face or skull being bashed in coming off a horse. I would be equipped with a lance, usually longer than this. You would couch it for jousting, for riding. You could also throw it or treat it like a usual spear. Fighting, like that, or like that. Come off your horse, and on foot, to kill another knight, my first weapon would be the mace. The mace would be used to break the bones. Shoulders, elbows, kneecaps, ribs, face. Or to bludgeon the other knight on the head so many times until they get concussion and vomit everywhere and pass out. And then you can take them prisoner at your leisure. This will bash through the mail. Other than this weapon, the only other way to actually kill a knight, other than shooting them full of arrows, is to get your sword or knife and cut the femoral artery or through the eye slots on the helmet. That's it. Against another knight, this is used primarily as a club or the quillions go in the eye slots. The pommel is used to break the nose, the teeth, and then administer the blows at will. Wind up is from here, build up enough power. Step using the weight of the mail, you and the swords to make an effective cut. Yeah! And carry on going, exit the body, ready for a second strike, probably to the head or smash into the nose. The sword is solid at the last few inches. This is for thrusting. Swords earlier, these for cutting, aiming to cut with this section. This would probably be blunt. By 1150 and onwards, you get piercing swords, in which they would be used to administer stabs to the femoral artery and the thighs and the groin, straight into the gut, the throat, the face. Swords are undecorated by and large by this period. They're becoming far more of a utilitarian item, though there are some rather pretty examples. Scabbard is made of wood, nothing particularly fancy, just a simple knot. The armour extends all the way down to the fingertips, to the knees, covering the throat and my head. I'm not wearing the chainmail shouse, the armoured hose, but if they were there, they would extend as far as my regular ones, leaving only an area around the groin of, and inner thigh exposed. With those on and mounted, it's pretty hard to kill one of these guys. The gloves have slits for the mittens, so I can actually get them off. <laughs> Eventually. <laughs> and from here, I've got a full range of dexterity again, which is lovely. Taking the armour off. Well, I'll show you how this is done. <laughs> you would have a squire to help with these duties. It's not easy to get all this gear on on your own. Last thing before taking the armour off. Shield. Teardrop shaped to cover the legs. It will change in the next 20 years by 1160, 1170 become flat topped and to have no boss and to have full heraldry on it which is in its infancy right now. Strapping for the shield. Eventually. Got 
I hope your opponent is polite <laughs> and waits for you. There we go. And he's locked up. As a left handed fighter, the rules are slightly different for me, but by and large, with this, it's quite well covered. Oh, I could strike quite effectively and defensively with the shield. Okay. And also, with a strap on, hold reins for a horse and. Not hand. Hand out. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> with the gauge on, the long strap. can hold the reins, cover my leg, and still tilt fairly effectively against an opponent. The later development underneath the armour would probably, by about 1215, be a coat of plates, solid metal plates used to protect the torso to stop a lance. This will stop slashing blows. Bodkin arrows, really long, thin needle-like points, will go through it. That will obviously hurt a lot. With padding, that will reduce some of the lethality of it, but without, I would be dead meat. With the metal plates, or leather ones potentially, underneath, that would stop a lance point. It'll hurt like mad, but it won't kill me. To get the armour off, you've got to look very undignified. Unlace myself. The arrangements around the wrists are experimental. People who knew this equipment well and knew how to use it were unfortunately illiterate. So we have to use a hefty amount of experimental archaeology to try to fathom how they did this. Certainly an experiment, an alteration I made was to put in additional male links around the elbow so I could actually touch my shoulder without my limit, my movement range is very limited. I can dance the Macarena in this, and if you can do that, you've got a good range of movement. I won't ask you for a demonstration after the hours of fighting today, but when you're fresh... <laughs> well, I can get it go, right. Okay. Oh dear. Right. <laughs> yeah. There we go, good range of movement. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man. This is a weird hobby. <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, completely. Utterly mental. Good fun. Mm. <sighs> Keeps me off the street. <laughs> In terms of weight, you're wearing about a 12 year old child on your shoulders with all this. Heat stroke is a very real possibility, and it's not a lot of fun. As anyone who's had it can attest. Oh, there we go. Right. Gloves are off. Let's get this off. Let's take the arm off. You have to do a handstand. Can you describe to us how you feel now? <laughs> uh, after a week-long festival, wearing a 12-year-old child on your shoulders. <laughs> Dear me. Anyway. Hey, Ed, thank you very much. Oh, don't worry. Yes. Hang on a sec, I love the padding off. <laughs> Padded cap. In addition to the coif, that'll stop a lot of the blunt force trauma. This is a gambeson, stuffed with wool, horse hair, linen, blankets, raw fleece, whatever you got your mitts on to stop lots of the damage. Vented under the shoulder, under the armpit, probably, so you don't get heat stroke. Mm. Oh. As you can no doubt see how utterly sweaty and horrible I am right now. <laughs> wow. It's quite warm in there. Right. Hey, brilliant. Thank you so much. You're welcome.